Hey coders and welcome to episode 1 of our basic widgets season on the Flutter course. In today's episode we are going to be setting the stage and introducing a lot of the more foundational widgets which are used as building blocks in basically any Flutter project that you make. So I've picked out five of those widgets which we are going to be introducing and just explaining a little bit more and they are Material App, Scaffold, App Bar, Text, and Text Style. So let's jump on in over to the code and see how to implement these widgets. All right, so we have transitioned over to the Android Studio text editor. And again, the only reason why we are using this IDE is just that it comes with a lot of really cool Flutter plugins that just make the entire experience of creating a Flutter app a whole lot easier, such as, say, code completion. All right, as you recall, Flutter uses the Dart programming language and all Dart scripts start at the main method. So let's start coding our app within these two curly brackets. So essentially, to spin up Flutter and to start it, you're going to need to execute this function right here called run app. This will take in one argument, and that is a widget that you want to set as the root widget in your broader widget tree. So again, if you recall, whenever you make a Flutter app, basically it's just a very, very large widget tree. It has widgets within side of widgets, known as, wid as nested widgets. But when you run your app and you supply it with a widget, that's going to be the very start of your application, your root widget. All right, so I'm gonna select this second option, which is also going to auto import the material library. Basically, we'll have access to a lot of those pre-built widgets by importing the material library. All right, so we need to determine what do we want to be the root of our app, right? The root widget of our app. Well, let me actually define a new widget. I'm going to make my own custom widget. I'm going to call it my app. Now, whenever you make a custom widget, or at least most of the times when you make a custom widget, you're going to make a new class, and that class is going to inherit from one of two other widgets, either a stateful widget or a stateless widget. Now, don't worry about those two right now for too much, right? We're going to be going over both of those widgets in a later episode, and we'll just be explaining more on what they are and what they can do. But for now, just follow along with what I type. So I'm going to be typing STFUL, which is shorthand for stateful widget. And again, if I hit the enter button, then it's going to give me now boilerplate code for creating my own custom widget. So I'm gonna name it my, uh, my app. That's, the, that's going to be the name of the class because again, that's what I am referencing right here. All right, so these, some of these more foundational widgets for when you start your app may seem confusing at times. You may not get all of it uh, in this video, but again, uh, you're going to be basically using these every single time you make a new app and sometimes when you make a new screen on that app. So you're going to be seeing them quite frequently and eventually they'll just become second nature and you'll, it'll just be muscle memory. All right, so your, uh, your widget, my app, is going to extend off of the stateful widget uh, class. You're going to override the create state method on that widget and return my app state. Now, whenever this gets built, then this is what's going to display on your uh, simulator over here. So let's actually run this to see what that looks like. Now, this may take some time to actually build, a couple seconds, say. So I'm going to speed up the video now, and I'll see you shortly. All right, so this is now our app right here. Now it's just a pitch black screen because all that we are returning is just a container and that container is currently invisible. So again, that's why we're seeing nothing, but at least we have a running app right there, no errors. And just like that, uh, we have our app displaying on our simulator. All right, so let's look at the first widget, which is used in basically every single app that you make. And that is known as material app. 
Now this material app will basically set up a lot of the um, back end code and, and just overall code or overall features that you'll need for your entire app, right? So this is this will cover basically your entire app. So you only really, really need to use this material app widget once, and that is towards the top of your widget tree. Uh, in my in my scenario, this is going to be basically the first widget besides my app. Um, and this is going to again set up, say, the navigator if you want to switch between pages within your app. It'll also set up a default theme, which you can customize if you want. Um, but that is the material app. Now again, widgets can have nested widgets, and that's what we're going to start doing. So material app, it's going to take in a property called home, and then we're going to supply that home with another widget. So again, properties, usually how it goes is that properties all have lowercase letters, and then the value that you assign that property is, say, a widget. And widgets are basically like classes, so they all start with a capital letter. All right, so now that we have our app, our material app defined, let's start working on this page. So whenever I like to create a new page or a new route within my app, I always like to start with the scaffold widget. Now the scaffold widget basically just sets a certain structure for your page, right? It's basically like a layout widget. So I like to have the scaffold widget, and then one of the properties on the scaffold is your body. So the body of the scaffold on this page can have a widget. So what should we display? Well, let's just do something very simple. Let's just display the text, uh, hello world. Now, even text is a widget, right? So if you want to just write hello world, you're going to need to wrap that in a text widget. And it's very easy, it's right here, it's just text. So this text widget actually takes a positional argument rather than a named one like this. Um, it's going to take a positional argument and that's the first position and that is going to be whatever we want um, to display in our text widget. So let's just say again, hello world. And then if we save this, then there we go. So now we have our scaffold and then the body, which is just a white color for right now. Um, and then if you can see up here in the very top left-hand corner of the screen, we have our text, hello world. Now it's kind of being cut off, um, but at least now we have more of a structured app. All right, so let's look at a little bit more of these properties before we move on. Um, let's start off on the scaffold. So the scaffold, again, is basically your scaffolding or your structure for your page, right? Every single page, it's smart to have a scaffold on that page, and you can add different things to that scaffold. So right now we already have a body, but let's say that we wanted to add an app bar. Now, so we would access the app bar property like this, again, lowercase a, and then, to, and then we would give it an app bar widget as the value. And that makes sense, right? We're giving the app bar widget to the app bar property. So what is an app bar? Well, an app bar is basically a section at the top of the screen that's kind of like a header section. It's almost like a navigation uh, menu right there. So let me refresh that and you can see. All right, so there it is right here. Now we can give, we can assign different properties to that app bar. Let's say that we want to give it a title. And there we go, it, it says it accepts a widget. So let's just give it a text widget and we'll give that title, let's see, we'll give it the name of our app, which is where to edu. Where to edu. And there we go. So now our title is displayed right here in the center of our app bar. Now let's look at, let's say, a couple more uh, properties on the scaffold. So again, there's a lot of different um, uh, things that you, there's a lot of different uh, properties that you can add. Actually, I think we're gonna be done with the scaffold. Let's look at the app bar. So the app bar has more properties in and of itself as well. Let's look at the elevation. So the elevation, it basically is a property that says how far 
from the body do we want the app bar to appear lifted off of, right? So as you can see, there's, there's just a very, very faint shadow right now that makes it look like the app bar is on top of the body, right? But we can actually change that elevation of that app bar. Let's say we want to give it an elevation of 15. Now watch closely to this shadow. As you can see, the shadow just got a little bit darker and a, lot, and a little bit um, uh, more pronounced, right? So that means that it looks like this app bar has been raised a little bit higher off of this, of this body, right? But we can actually make it flush with the body by saying elevation is zero. There we go. All right, let's look at a couple of the properties off of the material app. Again, this widget is going to apply for the entirety of the app. The scaffold only applies for this specific page. So if we want to start routing between pages, we'd have to create a whole new scaffold. But the material app, again, it applies to the entire app. So let's see some of the properties off that. Again, the two big ones are the navigator or the navigation and the theme. So let's take a quick look at the theme. All right, so again, we can change now the theme and there's a, there's a couple different themes that we can uh, customize, but let's just use one of their pre-made themes right here, dark, or theme data dot dark. So if we save this now, we can see that now our app has been turned into a dark theme that has been that has been predefined by this material library right here. So there's another property that we can access and that is to get rid of this little debug banner. So right now this just tells us that we are in the debug mode but if we don't really want to see that then we can actually get rid of that by saying debug show checked mode banner as false. And if we save that then there we go it just went away. All right, so I actually like the light theme, so let me uh, get rid of that. Actually, let me just delete it. And then let me now try to change the style of this text. So here we go. We have the text right here, hello world. So one of the uh, another property of the text widget is the style of the text. So as you can see, this style property takes another widget, which is the text style um, widget. So there we go, I'm going to give it a text style. And on the text style widget, there are a lot of different properties, such as font size, font weight, font family. You can give it a color and all these different decorations. Let's first change the font size. And let's just give it a font size of 36, that sounds good. And then we'll also change the color. And as you can see, this accepts a color widget, right? So they even have widgets for the color. So we can define our own color, right, by giving, um, we can define our own color by giving it a hexadecimal value right here, but they also have pre-made colors right here, such as red, blue, green. So let's just give this a color of, let's say red. That sounds good. And now if we save it, we can see that Hello World has just grown to a font size of 36, and now it is red. All right, guys, I'm going to stop this video here. Um, again, if, if some of this stuff was confusing, such as the material app or the scaffold, don't worry about it right now. We're going to see a lot of that uh, in, in the upcoming videos, and then it's just going to become into second nature for you. Uh, and it's going to make a lot of sense as we continue in this series. But I hope you learned something uh, from this intro video, and I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next episode.